Good morning and welcome to the My King Television Network. I'm your host, Dr. Yvonne Baxter Bentley, of the IK Connection Sports Show. I am the executive producer of my own sports show. Today I want to talk to you about wisdom. Okay? What is wisdom? Wisdom state it's a state of being. It's a state of being wise. Experience and knowledge together with the power of applying them. Now that's pretty powerful. It's experience and knowledge brought together with my ability to apply the wisdom. Now, who are the most experienced? Because in IK Connection, remember, we connect the old with the new. The Y generation must embrace the latter generation. Why? So that you can have the wisdom from the experience of the latter generation. And these experiences come together to help you to apply a greater tomorrow, a greater strategy for some of the things that you're facing today. So that's what wisdom. And you know, people don't want wisdom. And I talk about this a lot. Why don't we want to sit next to your father or your mother and get the wisdom of your father or your mother? That's one of the things that I did with my books. You know, my book, The Silent Pain of a Great Man, I sat with my mother and my father and I got their wisdom. You know, I, I, I want to encourage athletes. Get the wisdom of the latter pro players. Get the wisdom of Michael Jordan. Get the wisdom of the latter. Alonzo Mourning, Charles Barkley, Clyde Drexler, Akeem Olajuwon, Moses Malone. You know, these are the guys when I was really into basketball and I watched basketball, you know, I watched them. My pastor is Pastor Billy Thompson. I never saw him. I saw him on videos my son showed me, but that was my first time ever seeing him in the basketball league as far as, you know, but get the wisdom of these, these men because they have experience and now they're applying the knowledge that they've learned. And so the generation needs to embrace, the new generation has to break, embrace the old generation because guess what? You may create moves that Michael Jordan never even thought of. And that's the beauty of seeing a LeBron James dominate the courts and the arena. And not just basketball, even though basketball was probably was one of my, my passionate sports. I'm an athlete, I play basketball, I play softball. I certainly, um, I even, people laugh, I brought a football here on my show because when I was being heavily recruited in girls basketball back in 1981, no one knew I had a friend named Kathy Walker who was in Oklahoma, and she said that we had a place for Oklahoma Dolls where I could have came and made the Oklahoma Doll football team. That's how athletic I was. You know, uh, ran track in middle school. Um, I did a lot. I did a lot of athletic uh, sports, volleyball. You know, I played volleyball as well. Soccer, I knew how to play soccer, but I uh, apologize to all you soccer players out there. I chose the gym. It was cool in there, you know. Uh, it was cool and it was hot outside, so it was just a matter of choice, not loving soccer. It just was a matter of choosing basketball because I wanted to be in the air condition. Okay, so let me talk about wisdom and how you should not reject wisdom. This is the results of rejecting wisdom. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. Wisdom is always crying. You know, this older people is always trying to tell you, you know, to do what's right. You know, I'm talking to my girls. Hey, you know, do what's right. My girls look at me like, Mom, you played out. We don't want to hear it, you know. But I thank God I have women of God around me, like Prophet Courtney Beecher. Uh, I have a Prophet Cynthia Thompson, who my daughters love, and they listen to other women of God who embraced them. I have six sisters. I tell, people say, you have six sisters? Yeah, I have six sisters and I have four brothers. And my six sisters and my nieces who are doctors now, congratulations, uh, Dr. 
uh, Shalanda Smith, congratulations, uh, Dr. Lydia Howard, uh, Powell, Powell, it's a powerful name, but congratulations, they becoming part of my kids' life to give them wisdom. My sister Norma Howard, just just sister Celeste Smith, I had just Alma, Dr. Alma Baxter, Dr. Janice, congratulations, my sister Dr. Janice Baxter, uh, my sister Mavis Baxter, my daughter was little, who was like right there, like a mother. So my brother McKinley Smith, he was chief of police, and McKinley Smith had, has fathered so many orphan kids. McKinley, I want you to know that we salute you. Uh, Celeste Smith, we salute you. You guys have taken in people who are not your own. Celeste was loving on the elderly. Uh, my brother McKinley Smith has been loving p other people, kids, raising them up all his life. And you and Lotus, Lotus, I don't want to forget you. You've been right by his side. And we so thank you for helping you helping process all these children that you processed and kept out of trouble. Uh, may God richly bless you for that. And may the uh, mansion that you're building for your wife in Georgia with her heart-shaped pool be a reality. And may everything you're trying to build be a reality and come in existence. And may you and Lotus behold the glory of your hard work and everything you plan. And certainly hats off to my father, Reverend Joseph B. Baxter. Dad, I want you to know on national television, I love you and I thank you for who you are to me and what you've done for me. If it wasn't for you and a mother like Missionary Lillian Smith, I would never be who I am and what I am. And again, I thank God for all my mentors and all the people who embrace me. And people don't like to say other people's name because they want me to just focus on me, but guess what? That's what makes you great. The impartation of others help you in your process. So never forget your process and never forget the people that you need to say thank you to. Dr. Lisa Baxley was an athlete right by my side. Me and her played, her and I played the board at Anderson High School. Girls basketball. When I left and went to University of Houston. And Chi Chi and all my players from University of Houston. I want you to know I love you. Thank God for you guys. You embrace me in a very powerful way when I was at University of Houston. Vicki, you, you guys showed me a lot of love and I so appreciate you. Uh, but again, my sister, Dr. Lisa Baxter, I left her to continue the legacy at Port Anderson High School. Uh, so Dr. Lisa Baxter, I'd like to thank you and even thank you for some of the things that you've done for me and connected me with powerful people like Dr. Uh, Bernice Daly and helping me get started. And I just want you to know you in my heart, yeah, even though you want to travel all these countries, um, so I can help you travel, but I, I love America, and I'm, I'm going to reside in America as um, you know as I go through my tender aging. So wisdom, she cries in the, as she cries in the chief place of the course, in the openings of the gate, in the city she uttered her her words, saying, "How long, ye simple ones, will ye have?" Our love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge and that's something the Bible says only a fool hate knowledge only a fool hate to be educated only a fool hate to be learned you know um, you know they put me on a program where I could learn more and be embraced by powerful teachers I'm like bring it on make me better I want to learn more only a fool re reject knowledge and with reject, reject growth, no matter who you are, where you are, you can grow in another sphere of influence. Even as an athlete, we like to stay cushioned and comfortable in our athletic arenas, and as a physical education teacher, as a, you know, whatever you are. Sometimes we like to stay comfortable in that. And somebody's trying to promote us to a classroom situation, or give us another opportunity as an AP or administrative, whatever. There's other opportunities. Like right now, I'm the executive producer of International Kingdom Connection, my own sports show. My goal is to have my own sports channel. Guess what? I have about four other opportunities through five links. Al Sings just told me that five links just created 20 channels. I just got a promotion with him with executive director. So I have other choices to create my own channel, and I thank God for that. You know, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm certainly excited about My King's Television Network embracing me and giving me a possible opportunity to create my own channel, you know, um, with them, and I will hope to do that. I think, um, thank you again, Dr. Abrams, for allowing me to be a, one of your 
tooties, your, your mentees with this show and with this technology piece. I thank you for that. And of course, I always thank God for um, my own mentor, uh, Prophet Cynthia Thompson, who trained me in the prophetic. And I thank God for uh, my principal, Teresa Hall, and Wendell Lamola, and all the people who embraced me at West Brown High School to make me an outstanding teacher. So we're going to continue to talk about turn you at my reproof. That means that somebody's going to reprove you. They're going to discipline you. They're telling you to turn you at, at their reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you, and I will make known my words unto you, because I have called, I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set at not all my counsels, and with none of my reproof. See, you can set at not all the counsels, all reproof. You can say, I'm not doing that. I don't want to go through that. I don't want nothing. I don't want anything you're saying to me. You can do that. And then what person come back and say, you know what? I gave you counsel, I reprove you, and you did nothing that I said. Say, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock, I will mock when your feet cometh. You see? So when you fail to do what you're supposed to do, whether it's in school, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in church, People laugh and they scorn you. They, they laugh at your calamity. You know, they laugh that you didn't make your process. You didn't make the points. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when the distress and anguish come upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Wow, I want to stop right there. So you know what? You can have a lot of stuff coming at you for reproof. I got the old answer to my own question. For reproof and correction, and you shine. You don't want it. And your rejection of this could cause you to come in calamity. Whether it's your teachers told you five times to have a seat. Don't throw things in my class. Don't bring things in my class. And they keep telling you that, and they're reproving. Then you get reproved by the administrator. You get reproved by serving the detention. And then after you get reproved by serving the detention, you still find a way to do mischief, to continue in your error. It's an advantage. And there's an advancement if you continue in your error. Then what happens? Then you go to calamity. Then things start bad start happening. Then you... You know, you start just getting in trouble. And there's a system for people who are troubled people. And that happens all the time. So we want to make sure that we listen to the wisdom of the wise so that we embrace their experience with their knowledge and so we can begin to apply it so that we can be wise young men and women. And people can tell when wisdom is on a child, or on a, a young adult. So you want to make sure that you um, apply the wisdom and it says when your fear cometh as desolation okay I read that I'm going to go down to Proverbs 1 if you're just tuning in Proverbs 1 um, 29 for they that hate knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord they would none none of my counsel they despise all my reproof they despise all the counsel therefore should they eat of the fruit of their own way <laughs> you you rebellious and you begin to continue to do and go into your errors you go eat the ref, the fruit of your own way if somebody said no i don't want you to do this like this and i thank god that prophet Cynthia is good about saying no i don't want this done like this you know uh, i've had a lot of trainers who are good about this uh, Dr. Abrams is good about saying this is exactly what I want you to do, this I want you to do it. You know, a lot of people come in my life and this, that's what they're telling me. Even at my age, it still exists on every level and every platform that you live on. And so, there are consequences if you continue to do it wrong. It says, therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, because no, I want to do it my way, no, I want to do it my mama way, mama, you know, you get this all the time. Mom would grow. Okay, I know the consequences of doing it your own way. 
But the Bible says you're going to eat the fruit of doing it your own way and be filled with their own devices. Oh my goodness. You're going to be filled with your own devices. So that means that you're not just going to continue to eat of your own way and become like your way. All the devices that create out of your rebellious ways is coming with you. So guess what? That's going to affect your family life, your friends, your social life. It's going to affect your community. So you can't do it your way. You know, if you're on the fields, and if you're playing football, basketball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, whatever you're playing, tennis, racquetball, badminton, whatever you're playing, whatever you're doing, follow your coach, follow the leader. Do it the way your coach said. Read some books. You know, now we can go to Britannian, Britannian uh, schools and we can learn and research there. Uh, people don't, you know, I love Google Chrome. Google has a lot of stuff going on, but if you want it to be factual, you have public libraries that you, I love the public library. People are like, you mean in a public library? I love the public library. I love, if it ain't my home church and the public library. <laughs> you know, public libraries have all the resources you can ever find. They have rooms. They have all kind of resources that you can use and utilize. So I thank God for uh, the City Commission, whoever is responsible for public libraries. We thank you for those public libraries because they are one of my very favorite places to me. I'm going to continue to read Proverbs, first, Proverbs 1, and uh, we are now going to read 32. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. See, turning away from the simple is going to slay you. What does that mean? Slay? That's going to wound you. That's going to kill you. It's going to take you out. And the prosperity of the fools shall destroy them. <laughs> Isn't drug dealers prospering? They look good, they, buy, they can buy you anything they want. The Bible says the prosperity of a fool shall destroy them. You know, it's, I said it's uh, called, excuse me, in certain cultures it's now pharmaceutical selling of illegal drugs. And it all looks good, it's all clean, it's, you know, it's not as sloppy if it was on another neighborhood in another side of town. You know, it's amazing. but. The prosperity, guys, of doing it the wrong way is going to lead to jail. It's going to lead to destruction. But whoever hearkens, so now you can hearken unto me, and that's unto the Lord, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So God has created a safe haven, a safe place for you to come in and to sit with him and to... And to say, hey, look, I don't want to be like these evil men. I don't want to be like these evil women. I want to run from this lifestyle, whether it's selling drugs, whether it's domestic violence, whether it's whatever illegal thing that you're doing. The Lord has a place, a safe haven. He has places for you that are safe. I think it should be some of the safest places in the world should be churches. Some of the safest places in the world should be your school. Some of the safest places in the world should be your home. And I should have said your home, it should be your church, and it should be your school. And it should be in the homes of other family members. You should be able to travel, whatever your name is, to a safe place with various people. And I hope that with some of the things that I'm doing with IK Connection Powerhouse System, and I thank God that I feel that I can travel through all these safe places with people who have my sister to be safe and to be promoted by you in a positive way. Not to be treated unfairly, unrighteously. You know, I just had to make a phone call to someone in my connection. You have my name out there and your overseer is getting rich off my name and my company and you not giving me anything. You've literally taken all my work and all my things and you placed it under someone else. That's unrighteous, guys. That's wicked. I was the person who worked for you. I was the person that made it move like that for you. And you've given it to someone else. That's not righteous. That's wicked. 